I, Paul, together with Silas and Timothy, greet the Church of the Thessalonian Christians in the name of God our Father and our Master, Jesus Christ. Our God gives you everything you need, makes you everything you're to be. You need to know, friends, that thanking God over and over for you is not only a pleasure, it's a must. We have to do it. Your faith is growing phenomenally, your love for each other is developing wonderfully. Why, it's only right that we give thanks. We're so proud of you, you're so steady and determined in your faith despite all the hard times that have broadsided you. We tell everyone we meet in the churches all about you. All this trouble is a clear sign that God has decided to make you fit for the kingdom. You're suffering now, but justice is on the way. When the Master Jesus appears out of heaven in a blaze of fire with his strong angels, he'll even up the score by settling accounts with those who gave you such a bad time. His coming will be the break we've been waiting for. Those who refuse to know God and refuse to obey the message will pay for what they've done. Eternal exile from the presence of the Master and His splendid power is their sentence. But on that very same day when He comes, He will be exalted by His followers and celebrated by all who believe, and all because you believed what we told you. Because we know that this extraordinary day is just ahead, we pray for you all the time, Pray that our God will make you fit for what He's called you to be, pray that He'll fill your good ideas and acts of faith with His own energy so that it all amounts to something. If your life honors the name of Jesus, He will honor you. Grace is behind and through all of this, our God giving Himself freely, the Master, Jesus Christ, giving Himself freely. Now, friends, read these next words carefully. Slow down and don't go jumping to conclusions regarding the day when our Master, Jesus Christ, will come back and we assemble to welcome Him. Don't let anyone shake you up or get you excited over some breathless report or rumored letter from me that the day of the Master's arrival has come and gone. Don't fall for any line like that. Before that day comes, a couple of things have to happen. First, the apostasy. Second, the debut of the anarchist, a partner in crime with Satan. He'll defy and then take over every so-called god or altar. Having cleared away the opposition, he'll then set himself up in God's temple as God Almighty. Don't you remember me going over all this in detail when I was with you? Are your memories that short? You'll also remember that I told you the anarchist is being held back until just the right time. That doesn't mean that the spirit of anarchy is not now at work. It is, secretly and underground. But the time will come when the anarchist will no longer be held back, but will be let loose. But don't worry. The Master Jesus will be right on his heels and blow him away. The master appears and, puff, the anarchist is out of there. The anarchist's coming is all Satan's work. All his power and signs and miracles are fake, evil sleight of hand that plays to the gallery of those who hate the truth that could save them. And since they're so obsessed with evil, God rubs their noses in it, gives them what they want. Since they refuse to trust truth, they're banished to their chosen world of lies and illusions. Meanwhile, we've got our hands full continually thanking God for you, our good friends, so loved by God. God picked you out as His from the very start. Think of it, included in God's original plan of salvation by the bond of faith in the living truth. This is the life of the Spirit He invited you to through the message we delivered, in which you get in on the glory of our Master, Jesus Christ. So, friends, take a firm stand, feet on the ground and head high. Keep a tight grip on what you were taught, whether in personal conversation or by our letter. 
May Jesus himself and God our Father, who reached out in love and surprised you with gifts of unending help and confidence, put a fresh heart in you, invigorate your work and liven your speech. One more thing, friends, pray for us. Pray that the Master's word will simply take off and race through the country to a groundswell of response, just as it did among you. And pray that we'll be rescued from these troublemakers who are trying to do us in. I'm finding that not all believers are believers. But the Master never lets us down. He'll stick by you and protect you from evil. Because of the Master, we have great confidence in you. We know you're doing everything we told you and will continue doing it. May the Master take you by the hand and lead you along the path of God's love and Christ's endurance. Our orders, backed up by the Master, Jesus, are to refuse to have anything to do with those among you who are lazy and refuse to work the way we taught you. Don't permit them to freeload on the rest. We showed you how to pull your weight when we were with you, so get on with it. We didn't sit around on our hands expecting others to take care of us. In fact, we worked our fingers to the bone, up half the night moonlighting so you wouldn't be burdened with taking care of us. And it wasn't because we didn't have a right to your support, we did. We simply wanted to provide an example of diligence, hoping it would prove contagious. Don't you remember the rule we had when we lived with you? If you don't work, you don't eat. And now we're getting reports that a bunch of lazy good-for-nothings are taking advantage of you. This must not be tolerated. We command them to get to work immediately, no excuses, no arguments, and earn their own keep. Friends, don't slack off in doing your duty. If anyone refuses to obey our clear command written in this letter, don't let him get by with it. Point out such a person and refuse to subsidize his freeloading. Maybe then he'll think twice. But don't treat him as an enemy. Sit him down and talk about the problem as someone who cares. May the Master of Peace himself give you the gift of getting along with each other at all times, in all ways. May the Master be truly among you. I, Paul, bid you goodbye in my own handwriting. I do this in all my letters, so examine my signature as proof that the letter is genuine. The incredible grace of our Master, Jesus Christ, be with all of you.